and a three. Hi, and welcome to Bottles and Broads, a new show about wine, women, and all other good things. This week, we're going to be tasting and recommending some kosher wines, the ones that most folks see only around Passover, which is coming up very soon. These are definitely not your mother's Manischewitz or your Aunt Sadie Shapiro's. Hi, I'm Amy Kaufman. Welcome to Bottles and Broads, and I turn it to Leslie Gewurz. Because we were, you know, a little anxious, perhaps, we started off a little early. We're having a little sparkling wine. This is kosher, it is sparkling, and l'chaim. L'chaim. Our sparkler is from a lovely little house um, in, in, Fuego. Fuego. in Fuego. This was uh, $12. And it tasted good. And it tasted good. It's delicious. Well, we'd like to uh, give you some information about what makes wine kosher. Um, and the interesting thing about the wine is that it really starts from the vineyards. Then from there we go into the actual production of the wine, which only can be made by Sabbath observant Jews. Uh, that's really what makes it kosher. That's really the last part of it. So it starts in the vineyards, and then it goes to the actual the crushing of the grapes, and then the bottling of the wine all has to be done by Sabbath observant Jews. That's really the only difference between kosher wine and non-kosher wine. People think of, of uh, Passover wines as being traditionally kind of red. I mean, Manischewitz is sort of purple, but it, you know, is it okay to have a white wine at Passover? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Because you know, I think part of what one has at Passover is fish, mm -hmm. somewhere along the line. There's and you, you know, on the other hand, if you insist on having a red, but you've got somebody who loves uh, white wine, the red for them will probably be a Pinot Noir or a Grenache, and you will find both of those these days. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, from, I mean, uh, if you want to talk about a little bit about the history of kosher wine, uh, probably since a lot of our parents came here, uh, they were drinking very, very sweet wine in America, which was made in New York State, called Concord Grape. Mm. And many of us grew up with that in our families as a tradition, and we really didn't know that kosher wine could be dry. And that's some of what we're going to drink here today. Uh, these are all nice dry wines. And so about 20 or so years ago, they started to bring in new kosher wine that was going to be made in a more typical American style, which was not sweet. And then we came up with these great champagnes. And so now we have, thank God, a new custom of not drinking Concord grape. <laughs> So we just wanted to reassure you that the wines we're going to have today and discuss, not your mother's Manischewitz. Yeah, we're going to just take that. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay. okay. We're going to put that away. Save it for the Herosis. That's really what it's good for. Next time on Bottles and Bras, we'll be tasting through white and reds. So make sure to come back soon. 